Recently, I was surprised to see this email telling me I'm nouveau rich now, as I don't really receive payments on Payoneer with any sort of regularity anymore. Upon hacking into the mainframe, I learned that I had just made 150 bucks or whatever um, from just a couple of mundane 10 second videos that I shot on vacation in LA a few years ago. In this video I'll tell you how you too can get somewhat rich extremely slowly and I'll share more examples of how I'm rolling in money thanks to my magnificent if despotic empire of stock media content and I'll include real dollar figures so you can get a real idea um, because sharing is caring, right? All right. Let the video commence. So my name is Bored, and there's not really much I can do about that, but I can put this hat on so you'll remember me. Okay, and uh, let, let me just... Uh... All right, so what's this video about? Basically, there are these things called stock libraries. I'm sure you've heard of them, probably even used them. Um, stock libraries are chock full of photos, uh, but also videos um, of absolutely everything. And you can download these assets and use them in your different digital projects or print projects for that matter. Um, just design stuff. So stock libraries are giant vaults full of full of photos and videos of, or music even, uh, of varying quality. But the point is you can search for a thing and probably there's a thing there that you're looking for. Some of the more famous ones that people pay for include Shutterstock, Pond5, Getty Images, uh, probably a bunch of others I'm not thinking of. The one I happen to be using is called Pond5. I started uploading some content to libraries a few years ago, just kind of almost on a whim, just to try it out. And I had the idea early on that I would upload to as many sites as possible because it would theoretically increase my chances of occasionally making some money somewhere, right? Like somebody on some site might find one of my pieces of content in the giant heap that is the world of stock libraries on the internet. I quickly found though that first of all, um, it takes a lot of time to upload to a million different sites and you gotta kind of keep track of everything. It's just kind of a lot of work. Uh, and the other thing that happened a few years ago is that most of these sites moved over to preferring what they call uh, exclusive deals. So basically they prefer that their contributors um, are exclusive to their platform. Basically, they're monogamists. They are old school monogamists. They're not into open relationships. I ended up signing an exclusive deal with Pond5 because it's the only site I ever sold anything on and I have sort of very little to lose. This isn't a big pursuit of mine. It's just a tiny little extra revenue stream that I was trying out at the time and then promptly forgot about. So to kind of finish the story about the footage I just made $150 from, um, basically several years ago, uh, my wife and I took a trip out to LA and it was just like a vacation. We, you know, waltz around different neighborhoods. We went uh, to Santa Monica and Venice. We went to Beverly Hills, you know, Rodeo Drive. Um, we lived in Hollywood, uh, bad idea. Um, and we went to Silver Lake and Echo Park and all that jazz. And along the way, I would take pictures as one does when one is a tourist. Uh, and I would shoot some video as well, just for my own record keeping. <laughs> I don't know. Why do you, why do we do this? Um, but anyway, yeah, so I shot stuff on my camera and I shot stuff mostly on my iPhone. I think I made this kind of beautiful magazine about it. Um, I, after we travel, I like to make these kind of photo magazines um, instead of photo albums. And I uploaded some of the footage um, sort of randomly uh, to Pond5 and then never thought about it again. Until I suddenly got these $150 that just fell into my lap. Now, actually, that's not entirely true because 
I've sold stuff from this trick before too. Maybe a couple of years ago, I sold at least one other uh, shot from LA. And it's just kind of a cool thing because you, you know, you spend money on these trips and then years later, I feel like I'm basically getting like rebates. I'm getting paid back some of the money I spent on the trip. So that every time I sell something like this, the cost of my trip goes down. And that's, I think, a, a healthy way of thinking about this. It's like, you're not gonna get rich on this. It's not gonna be a full-time job. But every now and then, you you make some money and you save some money, basically. You, you can go have brunch, right? Or like, you can feel better about what you spent money on several years ago or two months ago or two days ago. And I think that's the way to think about this kind of revenue stream. It's, it just makes life a little easier, but it doesn't solve all life's problems. Few things do. So just, you know, you add all those things up, in the end, you can have a nice, easy, lazy life like mine. In addition to photo and video libraries, there are of course also music libraries. And I'm a bit of a hobby musician and I'm a hobby musician with a passion. So I've actually written and recorded well over 200 songs and many of them are quite bad and some of them are not that bad and probably some of them are good, you know, I hope. Uh, but at any rate, a lot of those songs and especially like instrumental versions, I've uploaded to another library. Uh, and it's a very similar story with that. I uploaded music probably 12, 15 years ago. Then years went by and nothing happened, so I completely forgot about it. And then one day I got a check in the mail for hundreds of dollars. Um, and now I basically regularly make, I don't know, maybe a few hundred dollars a year on my music. In fact, one time my wife and I were cat sitting for an old colleague and sitting under two cats on their couch, I composed a sort of a cello melody on an app on my phone. And maybe a year or so later or something, that song made me this amount. So I'm about to retire on a yacht in the Caribbean. Another time I was on a flight somewhere and to kill time, I decided to make a very bad kind of Euro dance album on another app. And actually several songs off of that quote unquote album that I made on a flight, you know, just a throwaway dumb thing. Um, several of those songs have been placed in TV shows. So yes, I, my music is actually in a million different TV shows. You can barely hear it, and it's seven seconds of it, and it's in the background of pregnant teen moms arguing with each other, but it's there, and I make several cents, even several dollars sometimes, from this, still to this day. <laughs> Reruns, baby. So yeah, I guess I'm making this video to encourage you to give this a try. Like, upload your stuff, you have B-roll, if you're a YouTuber or whatever, you have B-roll that you're not using for anything, it kind of is worth uploading to these sites. Like, if you're making a ton of money already, then this isn't worth your time. But if you're sort of just like starting out or you're just someone who has the patience for some of these like small revenue streams, believe it or not that this stuff still does work. This is probably not a revenue stream that's ever going to grow again. It's, it's, this is, this, you know, they're closing up shop. But still, you know, a lot of these like professional media organizations, um, agencies and so on, they have subscriptions to these major sites that have, you know, good quality stock and you can be on those sites and you can get some of that corporate money. So, you know, if somebody really needs a video clip of people shopping on the street in Venice, they might as well be buying my clip. So yeah, I guess the point is, these things are kind of worth doing. You're not gonna get rich. You're not gonna make it a full-time job, probably. I, I, there are people who are able to make this a full-time job, but I don't think those people are happy. I don't think it's a good life. And it's definitely a life that doesn't have a great future because the competition is just ever increasing. The, it, the markets are more and more saturated. 
and you have the advent of AI too, so people are going to be generating all kinds of stuff. Um, you know, it's an uphill battle, this kind of thing. But the point is, every now and then, you kind of hit the jackpot, the, the tiny jackpot. But you hit the jackpot, you get some money out of sort of nothing. Um, there is some labor involved, but this is, you know, as close to a passive income as you pretty much can get. So it's kind of worth doing. I do think that the way to think about this is as an additional revenue stream and not one that you rely on. It's just a way of like sometimes getting some money out of nowhere and that feels good. It, you know, you string enough of those kind of things together and you, you have a few nice moments each year when you sell something that you sort of forgot about. It's just a way to like occasionally suddenly be surprised that you have another 50 bucks or 100 bucks in your pocket. It's, it's like having a very deep couch that you keep finding money in, which is disgusting. You should clean the couch. All right, so there you have it. An actionable plan for you to become the next billionaire for people to hate. I'll be making more videos for creative people every week on mostly these topics. So if at least like three of those seem interesting to you, please like and subscribe and all that jazz. For now, may your evening envelop you in a sense of wonder and magic, and uh, may your preferred breakfast food be on the horizon. See you next week.